Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you guys about classes and objects in C++. The classes and objects are extremely useful and this is a very important topic in C++. So I'm gonna give you guys a full overview of what these are and we'll kind of get an idea of how to create classes and objects. So down here in my little program, I've just created a few different variables. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm just storing different pieces of information, right? I'm storing my name inside of this name variable and we're, we're storing it inside of a string. I'm storing pi, the first three digits of pi in this double variable. And then I'm storing my favorite letter G inside of this character variable. So just using these variables, we're able to store a bunch of different types of information. And actually, if you know anything about C++ data types, you'll know that by default, C++ allows us to store a bunch of different types of data. So we can store it like text, we can store numbers, we can store like whole numbers, um, decimal numbers, we can store characters. We can store all of these different types of information. But here's the problem though, and this is kind of a limitation to this, is that there's a lot of types of information. In other words, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of real world entities that can't just be represented using a string or a number or a character. Like there's a lot of things that we just can't represent with a string or a number or a character. Like, like a phone, for example. Like, I can't really like represent a phone in my program using like a string or using just a number. Or think of something like a computer or a keyboard or an animal or a person. Like, there's all these like real world entities that can't necessarily just be represented using the limited data types that we have. Right. So we only have like a certain number of data types that we can use. And those data types really aren't enough for us to necessarily model everything in the real world. So imagine I was creating a program, for example, where I wanted to work with books. Like maybe I was creating a program for a library and inside of that program, we needed to represent a book. Like I wanted to be able to work with books and store books and use books inside of my program. Well, there's no book data type. Right. There's no like I can't just come over here and say like book, you know, my book, whatever. Like there's no book data type for me to use. So this is kind of a problem. And, you know, forget, forget about books for a second. Imagine any other you know real world object like a person or a location or a musical instrument or really any type of like object in the real world that I'd want to represent in my program. And so, you know, really, the problem is we only have a limited data types, right? There's only certain types of data we can represent. And this is where classes and objects come in. So what we can do is we can actually create a class and a class is essentially a new data type. So when I create a class, I'm basically creating a new data type in C++. And that's really why classes are useful because we can kind of create a blueprint for a new type of data in our program. So like I said before, you know, I can't just come down and down here and create like a book data type, right? But what I can do is I can create a class that will specify what a book data type is. And then I can actually use that book data type that I created inside of my program. So I'm going to show you guys how we can do this. Let's write a program that will allow us to store and work with and represent books inside of our program. So we're essentially going to be creating a book data type. In order for me to do this, I am just going to come up here and I can do this in the same file as this main function. And I'm going to create a class and a class is essentially just a specification or a blueprint for a new data type in our program. So when I create a class, I'm basically creating a new data type. I'm creating a new type of data that we can work with and we can use in our programs. It's pretty cool. So over here to create a class, I'm just going to say class. And then I'm going to give this a name. And generally when we're naming classes, we are going to name them with capital letters. So I'm just going to make call this book. So we're going to create a book class. So this book class is going to act as a blueprint or a template for the book data type. Okay. So this is a, just a specification, right? We're basically specifying what a book is inside of our program. So what I want to do down here is I want to actually define the book data type and we can do that by giving it attributes. So we could basically say that a book is going to have like two or three or five different attributes that will describe it. And we're going to use all those other data types like strings, integers, doubles, characters, etc. 
in order to represent those attributes. So essentially this book class is going to be a collection of attributes, which are going to be things like numbers and strings, etc. So I'm just going to say public and I'm going to make a colon here and then we're going to come down here and I'm actually going to indent this. So it's a little bit easier to see. And down here, right below where I said public, I want to specify some attributes. So essentially, I'm mapping out what a book is going to be and what it's going to have. So let's think about what are the different attributes of a book? Well, the first and probably the most obvious is going to be the title. And we could represent the title as a string. So I can just say string title. And I'm just declaring these variables. I'm not going to give them values. Um, so what's another one? Let's think probably the author, right? So Another attribute of a book would be the book's author. Um, and let's try to think of one more. So I think another good one might be maybe let's do pages. So like this would be the number of pages in the book. And I'm sure you could think of a lot more. We could think of like publishing date, like publishing company. You know, you could think of, all, you know, a version number. There's a lot of different attributes we could store for a book, but let's keep it simple for now. Essentially what I'm doing here is I'm mapping out a blueprint. So I'm saying this is the blueprint for the book data type. And a book in our program can have a title, can have an author, and can have a number of pages associated to it. So this is a more of a complex data type. Really, it's a, it's a class. So this is basically all we need. So we're essentially just specifying what a book is. We're telling C++ what a book is in our program. So now I'm going to come down here and I'm actually going to create a book. So remember, this is just a blueprint. This is a template. It's a specification. But this isn't like a physical book. If I want to actually like have a physical book that I'm going to work with in my program, I need to create it down here. And we're actually going to be creating something called an object. So here's a little terminology lesson. A class is the specification. It's the blueprint. It's the template of a data type. So this book class is the specification. It's the blueprint of a book inside of our program. An object is an actual instance of that blueprint or it's an actual instance of that class. So an object is an actual book. So I'm going to create an object down here. We'll call it a book object. And that means it's a it's an actual book that's going to have an actual title, an actual author and an actual number of pages associated to it. And we can create, you know, hundreds of these different objects. But just know that a class is the template. It's the specification. And an object is an actual instance of that specification. So it's an actual book with an actual title, author and pages. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to say book. And again, I'm basically just telling C++ um, what type of data I want to create or what type of data I want to store. And then I'm going to give this a name. So I'm just going to call it book one. So now we have this book inside of our program. It's called book one. And what we want to do is start giving it some attributes. So I want to say book one dot title and we can actually give this a title so I can assign a value to book one for the title. So why don't we just say the title is like Harry Potter. So this is going to be a Harry Potter book and I can do the same thing for author and for pages. So I could say book one dot author and I can just give this an author. So it's JK Rowling. And we're going to give this a number of pages. So I could say book one dot pages, and this is going to be an integer. So let's say it has like 500 pages. And so now I'm actually able to represent and I'm able to work with a book inside of my program. So again, this up here is a class. It's a template for what a book is. This down here is an object. It's a physical book in our program that has actual attributes. So it has, this is the Harry Potter book with the JK Rowling author and 500 pages. So I'll show you guys what we can do. We could actually print out this information. So I could say C out and why don't we print out book one dot title. And so now I'm able to store all of this information inside of this book one object. So I'm basically able to represent a book in my program. When I run this program now, you'll see we're printing out the title of the book, which is Harry Potter. I could do the same thing for like pages. So we could print out the number of pages in book one which is going to be 500. So this is a really cool way for us to actually model a real world entity like a book inside of our program. So remember before we didn't have a book data type, right? I, I had nothing I could use to represent a book in my program. Now all of a sudden I have one. So I, I can actually represent a physical book in my program and we could make as many of these as we wanted. So I'm actually just going to copy this 
and let's make another book. So let's say in addition to this Harry Potter book, maybe we want to make another one. And I'm just gonna call this book two. So I'm gonna change all of these. So now all of these are set to book two and I'm gonna change all these attributes. Instead of it being a Harry Potter book, why don't we make it a Lord of the Rings book and the author is gonna be Tolkien. And let's say that this is like 700 pages. So now I have two books in my program. I have book one and I have book two. Book one has all of these attributes associated to it. Book two has all of these attributes associated to it. But both of these books are using this same book template, right? They're using the same book class. This is just a specification for what a book is. And down here, I was able to create individual instances of that specification. In other words, I was able to create individual book objects. So I could also print out stuff about book two. So now I could say like book two dot author, and this is going to print out book two's author. So now it's Tolkien. So just like before, when we have like integers and you know strings and stuff like that, now, in addition to those data types, we also have a book. So I can represent a book, I can use a book, I can store it, I can you know, modify all its values and, and stuff like that. And you know, down here, basically we're just defining the book and then we're giving it values. So I can say like book1.title. And I could also change these. So if I said book2.title down here, I could change it. So I could change it to like Hunger Games or something. And now book2.title is going to be updated. So these work just like normal variables would work. And you can see now we're getting Hunger Games. So that's pretty cool. And honestly, this is just a an introduction into classes and objects. Um, there's a lot more to learn about. There's a lot more to talk about, um, but hopefully this makes sense. What you wanna do is just play around with modeling a real world object. So in here, I modeled a book. So I created a book data type, but you could create like a phone data type. You could create a like a keyboard data type. Um, you could create anything, you know, essentially you're just taking a real world entity, um, breaking it up into individual attributes like title, author, and pages, and then you can represent it in your program. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.